In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to make your NeoVim configuration really shine with LSP integration. By the end of this video, we're gonna have a wonderful NeoVim config with all the goodies like go-to definition, code actions, quick fixes, hover documentation, all that good stuff from LSPs. That's right, today's the day we can configure LSPs with NeoVim. So let's LS please get into it right away. Welcome back to NeoVim for Noobs and everyone else really. This is a free series that helps guide you to create a NeoVim configuration that allows NeoVim to rival any IDE or text editor you could think of. Now in this episode, we're gonna focus on LSP integration, but really quickly, let's just look at what we've done so far. So if we check out our configuration right now, we can see that we have a bunch of plugins that do a lot of cool stuff for us. And in the last episode specifically, we modularized our config. So every single plugin is just one simple file that returns a Lua table and we learned that lazy will take each one of these tables, bring them all together and call that our configuration. But there's one thing that we're really missing here and that is LSP support. If you wanna know more about how we got to this configuration, then check out episodes one and two. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe and let's keep going. In this episode, we're gonna add LSP configuration and support for two languages, Lua, which is what we're writing our configuration files in, and JavaScript, because that's a really common language. I have a JavaScript project that I'm gonna show the, some of this stuff off in, so it's gonna be cool. So to start off with, let's talk about what an LSP actually is. LSP stands for Language Server Protocol, and it's an open JSON RPC standard that allows communication between text editors and language servers running on your machine that give language intelligence features. Originally, this was developed by Microsoft for C-sharp integration with Visual Studio Code. And then eventually Microsoft worked with Red Hat and a company called Code Envy to make this an open standard that any language could use and any editor could use to communicate to language servers back and forth. So essentially, if you're using LSP configurations in NeoVim, you could thank Microsoft. So let's use a real world example to explain this a little bit more clearly. Let's say an editor opens a JavaScript file. That editor will communicate to the language server. Uh, in this case, it would be TS server. That's the language server for JavaScript. And it would call a function, namely text document did open. It'll pass some information like the URI of the file, essentially like where the file is. And the language server will do some analysis on that file. Then when someone edits that file, let's say they add a new line or a new variable or whatever, the editor will call a function text document did update. And so that will pass more information to the language server, like the changes that were made to the file file, the file's URI and other things, the language server will then do analysis on those changes and give information back encoded in JSON to the text editor. Then the text editor and all of its tools can report back to the user the information that it got from the language server. So this is how it works with VS Code. It's all working under the hood, but essentially with VS Code, if you're working on JavaScript file, it installs its own TS server and communicates to the TS server when you make changes to your files. That's how VS Code does LSP integration. Now with NeoVim, things are a little bit more manual. We have to take care of the two sides of the equation. One, we have to install language servers on our system. And number two, we have to configure your NeoVim to actually talk to these language servers that we just installed. Okay, so now let's go ahead and install Mason on our system. And again, Mason is the plugin that's going to enable us to manage and install LSPs on our system. So it's gonna kind of take care of that half of the equation here for our LSP configuration. So if we go to Mason's GitHub repo, we can see that there are examples of the LazyVim installation, which is pretty simple. We just wanna copy this GitHub short URL. Then we can open our configuration, go to Lua plugins and create a new file. Now I'm just gonna put all these together, the three plugins that we need in order to configure LSPs. I think putting them all in one file is a little bit easier to understand. So I'm just gonna call this file LSP config. We open this file and we wanna return a Lua table and we want the short URL for Mason to be the thing we return, cool. Now we wanna set our config to a function that requires Mason and calls setup. If we quit and reopen NeoVim, we can see Mason gets installed. 
And if we type Mason, we see that we have a new command or actually a new set of commands for Mason. And if we type Mason, we see the beautiful and wonderful UI that Mason gives us. Now, these are all of the LSPs, the DAPs, the linters, and the formatters that Mason gives us to install. This is awesome, but we're not gonna use this yet. First, we're gonna install another package, Mason LSP config. So let's get into that now. So if we go to the repository, we can see that Mason LSP config bridges the gap between Mason and LSP config, which is another plugin we're gonna install later. But specifically what I like to use this for is the ensure installed functionality. This tells NeoVim and it tells Mason that we need to install these language servers before we do anything else. So it makes sure that these language servers exist on your system. So instead of manually going through Mason's UI and installing things, we're just gonna do it through this ensure installed property right here. So let's copy the GitHub short URL for LSP config. We can go to our plugin file for LSP configurations. We want to add another table here because it's going to be a list of configs and not just one. So in our new table, we have the GitHub short URL for Mason LSP config, and we want to set this one up. So our config property is going to be set to a function. And in the repo, we see that all we have to do is call require mason lsp config dot setup. So we copy and paste that. And within our setup function, we want to ensure that certain LSPs are installed in our system. So we can type ensure installed equals a Lua table of our LSPs. Now I know that Lua LS is the language server for Lua, which is the language obviously that we're writing our configuration in. So we wanna make sure that the Lua language server is installed no matter what. And if you want a reference to all of the language servers that Mason LSP config manages, you can go to their repository and they're all down here. There's a lot of them. Anyways, if we quit NeoVim and reopen it, we can see that Mason LSP config is installed. And if we look down here really quick, Lua LS was successfully installed. That means that the Lua language server was just installed on our machine using Mason LSP config and Mason. How cool is that? So what did we just do? We just installed a language server on our system. However, we do not have NeoVim hooked up to this language server. So NeoVim isn't sending any messages to a language server and it isn't accepting anything from a language server because we haven't configured that yet. So now let's install the third plugin we need to configure NeoVim to use language server. And that plugin is NVim LSP config. NVim LSP config amongst other things allows us to set key binding and actually set up the communication that NeoVim does between itself and language servers. So let's check it out. To start with, we can just copy the short URL for the repo right here. We can go into our configuration file, add another entry to our table and put the NVIM LSP config URL into the new table that we added. Then under this suggested configuration section in the repository, we can see that with LSP config, we want to require LSP config and then set things up for each language server we have installed. Okay, so we have Lua LS installed, so let's try and set it up for Lua LS and see what we get. So we see we set a local variable called LSP config, and that is set to require LSP config. And we can now call LSP config dot Lua underscore LS dot setup. And we need to wrap that into our configuration function. Almost forgot. Okay, so now let's exit Vim and reopen it. We can see that Lazy is installing NVim LSP config. Awesome. And let's go to our configuration files. Did you see that? You see this W right here? That means that our LSPs are actually communicating between NeoVim and our Lua language server. That's pretty cool. So now uh, NVim LSP config gives us some other commands. We can type LSP info, and that will give us the information of the LSPs that are connected to our current buffer. And we can see here we have the Lua LS client, and it looks like it's connected to this buffer right now, which is great because we're writing code in Lua. So our NeoVim configuration has picked up on the fact that this is a Lua file, and it is now trying to communicate 
changes and everything else to the Lua LS language server that we have installed on our system. So now NeoVim is communicating with our language server for Lua at least. Let's try and set up some key bindings so that we can take some actions within our files. So a really cool way to check what kind of functionality we have in NeoVim for communicating with language servers is to look at the help docs for vim.lsp.buff. This is essentially a help file that displays all the information and all the available functions in the vim.lsp.buff module. So we can see here if we want to display hover information about the symbol under the cursor, we can call the hover function. So then what does this look like? Well, in our configuration property in nvim lsp config, we can set a new key map, vim.keymap.set in normal mode. If we type shift K, we want to call vim.lsp.buff.hover. Okay, so if we quit and reopen NeoVim, we go to our lsp config, let's hover over require and type shift K. Okay, this is great. Now this displays documentation of the require function in Lua. Awesome. This is NeoVim sending a message to our language server and the language server returning the information to NeoVim. Now NeoVim is displaying it to us. Great. So let's add some more functionality. We could go back to the help documentation, but I think it's a little bit easier to reference the example configuration in NeoVim's NVim LSP config plugin. It's a little bit easier to look at this. Also, one more note, I think in future episodes, we're gonna to wanna to take advantage of this create auto command LSP attach function. Essentially what this does is it'll attach these key maps whenever the LSP attaches to a buffer, as opposed to what we're doing right now, which is global key bindings. I don't see a problem with it right now, but I think in the future, if we have anything specific for certain language servers, we're gonna to wanna to take advantage of LSP attach hook for NeoVim. But if we wanna keep going down our path here, I think uh, we want to set the key map for go to definition, which is always good. So let's set that here. I'm basically just copy and pasting. Our ops is an empty Lua table. Now that should work correctly. We already implemented hover as I showed you before. And we also wanna set a key map up for code actions because those are a really integral part of LSP configurations. And that is going to be leader CA and our ops is just an empty Lua table. Cool, so let's quit and reopen Vim and let's check out some of these functions. Now we see in our configuration file, we have some error saying there's, un, there's an undefined global vim variable. This is a thing that Lua is complaining about. So let's do space CA and that is our code actions. How sweet is this? This is so cool. But first let's do a little bit of extra credit here if you guys don't mind. We are going to install a plugin that makes our code action list and other lists show up as a cool UI select thing. There is a plugin for Telescope for this called Telescope UI Select. So if we just copy this GitHub repo right here, we can go to our Telescope file and add another plugin called Telescope UI Select. Now we want to configure it. And it looks like this is the configuration we use. So we can probably just copy and paste it from here into our file. Let's copy and paste. We can delete all the comments here. I don't think it's all that necessary. Let's add a close parentheses here. Let's indent, paste this up here, and let's wrap everything in our config property function. Now I might not be explaining this step by step here, I'm doing it a little bit quickly, but essentially what we're doing is we're adding an extension to Telescope for our UI Select plugin. And then we're calling load extensions UI Select on Telescope. So let's quit this, reopen NeoVim, Telescope UI Select is being installed, and now let's try a code action to see if it looks a little bit nicer here. Space CA, and hey, look at that. Now it's showing up in a Telescope UI select window as opposed to that little quick fix window we got below. If we type one, mark Vim as a defined global and hit enter, well, it looks like most of our errors went away. Yes, we're not seeing the errors anymore. And it looks like the Lua language server did whatever it had to to hide that warning to us. So now we're not seeing that warning anymore. So code actions work. 
Awesome. So now we have our Lua language server and some key bindings for a language server functionality set up. Let's try and set up another language server. This process is actually fairly simple. I have a JavaScript project and I want to set up the TS server language server to make sure that we can have the same functionality that we have in our Lua files in JavaScript. So in this ensure installed table, we want to add TS server. And down below in NVIM LSP config, by the way, this is why we're keeping this all in one file. It just seems a little bit easier to manage this way. We can add a new line saying LSP config dot TS server dot setup. This should install the language server for TS server and establish the communication between NeoVim and TS server using NVIM LSP config. So let's quit NeoVim, reopen it just to make sure we don't get any errors. And yes, we are seeing installing TS server, TS server was successfully installed. How awesome is that? So let's go to our JavaScript project. This is a React project. I'm pretty sure it's the Next.js, but to be completely honest, I kind of forget. So let's go down to our components, go to footer JSX, and let's just see what we got going on here. It looks like we have our language server stuff working. Let's try and type export phone. And then here's the thing, our built-in OmniFunk for NeoVim is control X, control O. You type those together like this, X, O, and it will automatically complete based on the LSP's feedback from that command. So we got function because it automatically completed that TS server gave us the information saying this, to autocomplete this, it's function. So let's just type some garbage here and say function and leave it at that and we can see that oh we have an error from our lsp that means javascript's lsp is working great awesome let's just double check to see if we can do a code action here because that'll be fun let's make a new div and close that div i know that react is going to complain that jsx expressions must have one parent element of course there it is let's go up here and type space ca and see what we can do wrap in jss jsx fragment okay cool type one hit enter and there you go. It's ugly, but it works the way it was supposed to. So now let's do a quick overview of what we did in today's episode. We basically took care of everything that is necessary for NeoVim to install and communicate with language servers on our system. We have the mason.envim plugin that installs and manages our language servers. We have mason lsp config that gives us the ever popular ensure installed property that makes sure we have language servers installed no matter what. And we have envim lsp config which hooks up our NeoVim to the language server itself and establishes that communication back and forth. So now we have what everyone needs to make NeoVim rival an IDE. We have LSP support. We're not quite done yet. So in the next episode, we're going to go over auto completions and snippets. We're going to kick this up to the next level and it's going to be amazing. So stick around, subscribe, and hey, thanks nerds.